But first, you know those moments on Antiques Roadshow when someone discovers that the painting they bought at a flea market is worth $100,000? Well, this next story is kind of like that. Except the Chicago man who found this unexpected treasure also found himself with a huge responsibility because he may have discovered one of the finest street photographers of the mid 20th century, a Chicago nanny by the name of Vivian Meyer. We don't know much about Vivian Meyer. We know that she worked as a nanny for families on the North Shore from the mid-1950s into the 90s. She was kind of a loner. She spoke with a French accent. She had strong opinions about movies and politics. And on her day off, she always carried a camera. First thing in the morning comes a camera around her neck, her head on, her shoes on, her coat on, and out she goes. Vivian Meyer worked and lived in the Bylanders' home in Wilmette from 1989 to 1993. They say they were happy with her work. And she accumulated a lot of stuff. We were not allowed into her room. Not that we would have, but it was stacked up to the ceiling with papers and boxes and boxes in our storage area downstairs in the basement. Now, many of those boxes are here in an attic on the north side of Chicago. This is 1963, just 1963 through 65 only. Okay. Just two years. Just two years. That's one box of negatives here. In 2007, John Maloof was a 26-year-old real estate agent. He was working on a book about his northwest side neighborhood, and one day at an auction, there were items from a repossessed storage locker, including a box filled with negatives. So this is just what we have I saw some of um, Marina Towers and I thought it was Chicago. So I said, you know, maybe we can use some of this for the book. John bought that box for $400. There were 30,000 negatives inside. When he started scanning them, he didn't find anything for his book. But what he found took his breath away. This is probably one of my favorite pictures. You get this, this woman in the 50s walking up to a 57 Chevy, and all you see is really her, her glow and the glow around her. John also found self-portraits of the photographer. Who was this woman? He couldn't find her name anywhere in the boxes. I actually just wanted to meet the person and, and ask for kind of advice on photography. <laughs> John contacted the other people who had picked up her boxes at the auction, and he bought those, too. Now he has roughly 100,000 of her negatives, many of which have never been seen by anyone. Well, right? all the stuff hasn't been looked at. All of I mean, this stuff here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bins. And then you have a box of rolls undeveloped. Wait, this is a whole box of... John estimates that up to a third of the negatives he bought were still on the rolls that came out of the camera. Now, the main task for John and his friend Tony Ridzen is to scan everything, to get a good look at her work and archive it. John says that when he finally found Vivian Meyer's name in one of the boxes in 2009, a Google search turned up just one thing an obituary from a few days earlier. That led him to a family she had worked for, and then another. And finally, a biography began to emerge. Vivian Meyer was born in New York in 1926 and lived in both France and New York growing up. By her mid-20s, she was living permanently in the U.S. She lived with one family as a nanny in Highland Park for 16 years. The children she cared for have been quoted as saying she was like Mary Poppins to them. Eccentric, delightful, taking them on great adventures. A later employer paints a more complex picture. When I told neighbors and friends of ours about the interest about Vivian Meyer, she says, that awful lady, she had terrible menace. A very strong, very determined, don't intervene in my space kind of uh, attitude. This is her own trunk here? Yeah, this is her trunk. Uh -huh. One of the families gave John many of Vivian's personal possessions. 
I don't know what to do with this stuff, to be honest with you. I'm not, it, it's it's kind of weird that I have it, but I'm not going to throw it out. It's, it's well, kind of it's part really, of our history, you know. Yeah. In addition to clothing, there are about 30 binders of newspaper clippings, more binders of some color prints she had made, and many of her cameras. Now here's the Rolleiflex that she shot with for most of her life. She had a few of these. Uh -huh. I only have one. And there were books of other photographers. There's no evidence that Vivian Meyer was schooled in photography, but it seems clear that she was aware of other artists. As John uncovered more and more of Vivian's photos, he knew he had stumbled onto something extraordinary. But he didn't know enough to know how significant she might be. I didn't have any level of expertise to know what I was looking at. The turning point came when he posted some of Vivian's photos on a street photography blog. He asked for opinions and advice, and by the next day he had 200 emails from around the world. I mean, I had book offers, I had exhibition offers and uh, a few different film, documentary film offers, um, everything. That was in 2009. The first exhibition was in Norway in 2010. Then in January 2011, a show at the Chicago Cultural Center. This is a real fine. There's a l definitely a lot there. Lanny Silverman curated the exhibition of 80 photos, knowing that the vast majority of Vivian Meyer's 100,000 photos have still not been seen by anyone. I've only looked at about 1,000. That's plenty enough. There's this incredible stuff there. There's about 15 photos from the 80 that we're showing that I think rank up with anybody, any of the great names. John and Tony put in four or five days a week on this project. And yet, at the rate they're going, it will take them several years to just scan all of Vivian's work. There's so much work I'm doing. There's times when it's, it's, it's overwhelming to the point where I have anxiety about how much there is to do and how little I've done with all the work I put in. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's quiet moments where I'm scanning by myself and I just, I just think, wow, you know, it's, it's just... It's amazing that I'm, I'm doing this, that someone like me is doing this. Who knows if art historians and collectors will eventually count Vivian Meyer among the greats, like Robert Frank and Walker Evans. But for now, John Maloof is determined to give her a shot at it. I mean, I've contacted big institutions such as MoMA and Tate Modern. I'm going to keep trying to, to do that, and I think that uh, a lot of people want to see her there. Of course, John's efforts are not just altruistic. If Vivian Meyer is fully accepted by the art world, he knows he could be sitting on a gold mine. I'm sure it's worth a lot of money. I don't know how much. I really haven't had time. It's been crazy, and it's been working basically all day, almost every day. In fact, John has spent thousands of dollars of his own money on film processing and equipment. It's clear that Vivian was a really private person. How do you think she would feel about the fact that this is all becoming so public? I, you know, I, I could say a couple of things to that. Uh, I'll never know, of course. Um, I have an audio tape that she recorded, and she says a little tidbit about what she feels about you know, what happens after you die and when somebody takes up after you. Well, I suppose nothing is meant to last forever. We have to make room for other people. It's a wheel. You get on, you have to go to the end, and then someone else has the same opportunity to go to the end and so on, and somebody else takes their place. For Chicago Tonight, this is Jay Shevsky. Wow, fascinating. The first American exhibition of Vivian Meyer's work will open at the Chicago Cultural Center on January 7th and run through early April. In December 2008, Vivian Meyer slipped on the ice and hit her head. She died about four months later in an Oak Park nursing home. She was 83. You can get a link to many more of her photos at our website, wttw.com slash Chicago Tonight.